Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial on path. This is a lesson on the normal distribution. The normal distribution, which is also known as the Gaussian distribution, is among the most widely used distribution functions. This is mainly due to the central limit theorem, which we will cover in a separate lesson. In short, the central limit theorem says, while well, large sample of observations are under consideration, and under some regulatory conditions, the normal distribution can be used to approximate other distributions. This property, along with its computational tractability and bell-shaped symmetry, make the normal distribution very appealing to practitioners. In this lesson, we will show or lay out the probability density function of the normal distribution and a spatial case of it, which is called the standard normal distribution. We will derive its expectation, variance, and moment generating function. Let's say we have a random variable x which follows a normal distribution. The notation is n parentheses mu comma sigma square. Okay, this random variable has two parameters mu and sigma square. Its probability density function is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma e to the power of negative one half x minus mu over sigma quantity squared and its support is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Mu denotes the mean and sigma square denotes the variance of this random variable. In a separate lesson I have already shown that the probability density function of a normal distribution integrates to one. For those interested here's the link to that lesson. The parameter mu is sometimes called the location parameter. This is because a change in this location parameter shifts the PDF along the horizontal axis. For example, on this plot, we have two probability density functions of a normal distribution's overlay, one with parameter mu equals zero and sigma equals one, another one with parameter mu equals one and red dotted lines and sigma squared equals one. As you can see, a change in mu, which is the only thing that's different for these two plots, then we have a shift along the horizontal axis. A change in sigma squared changes the shape of the probability density function. This plot has two probability density functions. The only difference between these two is the black line has a variance equal to 1, and the red dotted line has a variance equal to 0.5 square. As you can see, a change in sigma changes the, changes the shape of the probability density function. A particular case of the normal distribution is the standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean zero and sigma square equals one. Its, it's probability density function is one over the square root of two pi times e to the power of negative one half z squared. C is from negative infinity to positive infinity. A very useful fact about normal distributions is that any random variable which is normally distributed with mean mu and sigma square can be written as a transformation of the standard normal random variable z. And that transformation function is sigma times z plus mu, where sigma is greater than zero and mu can be any real number. Now this is a very important relationship because we can use this relationship to find the expected value of x, variance of x, and moment generating function of x if we know the expectation variance and MGF of the standard normal ra random variable z. So this is because the expected value of x is equal to the expected value of sigma z plus mu which is equal to sigma times the expected value of z plus mu. Since z is the standard normal, its expected value is zero. Therefore, the expectation of x is mu. The variance of x is equal to the variance of sigma z plus mu, which is equal to sigma squared times the variance of z plus mu's constant, so which has a zero variance. But the variance of z is equal to one. Therefore, the variance of x is sigma squared. The moment generating function of a random variable x, which is normal, is the expected value of e to the power of t times x. 
using the relationship that we have. This is the expected value of e to the power of t times sigma z plus mu, which equals the expected value of e to the power of t sigma z plus t times mu, which is equal to the expectation of e to the power of t sigma z times e to the power of t mu, which is a constant with respect to z, so I can take it outside of the expectation. Therefore, I have the MGF is e to the power of t mu times the expectation of e to the power of t sigma z. If you look at the expectation, that is the moment generating function of a standard normal evaluated at t times sigma. Therefore, using re this relationship, we can find the moment generating function of any normal random variable x if we have the MGF of a standard normal. For the rest of this lesson, what I will do is show that the expected value of z is equal to zero. Number one, the expectation of a standard normal random variable is zero. The second item is show that the variance of the standard normal random variable z is one. Number three is to find the moment generating function of the standard normal random variable c. And that will be equal to e to the power of one half t square. Once I show this three items, I can use these items and the relationships that we have up here to find the MGF expectation and variance of any normal random variable. The expected value of z is the integral from the negative infinity to positive infinity of z times the PDF dz, which equals the integral negative infinity to infinity of z times 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the power of negative 1 half z squared dz. Using a u substitution, let u be equal to z squared. This implies the differential du as 2 times z times dz. As u, I'm sorry, as z goes to negative infinity, the lower limit of the integral, u approaches infinity because u is z squared. As z approaches positive infinity, the upper limit of the integral, u approaches positive infinity. u equals z squared is a parabola. It's monotonically decreasing negative infinity to zero and monotonically increasing zero to infinity. So the integral may be easier to, to evaluate if we integrate from negative infinity to zero and zero to infinity and put the two components together. Okay, if we want to do that, you would like to know what happens to u as z goes to zero. As z goes to zero, u also goes to zero. Rewriting the integral, we have integral negative infinity to zero of z times one over the square root of two pi e to the power of negative one half z square dz plus the integral zero to infinity of z times one over the square root of two pi e to the power of negative one half z squared dz. This implies the expectation of the standard normal random variable is the integral using u as a variable of integration. As z goes to negative infinity, we have u go into infinity. As z goes to zero, we have u goes to zero. We don't really like writing a higher value at the lower limit of the integral and a lower value at the upper limit of the integral. So we can actually interchange these limits of integration, zero to infinity. When we interchange limits of integration, we need to change the sign of the integrand. So we introduce a negative sign. Then I have minus one over the square root of two pi e to the power of negative one half. Instead of z squared, I have u. z dz is equal to 
du divided by 2. Okay, so cdz is 1 half du plus the integral as c goes to 0, u goes to 0. c goes to infinity, u goes to infinity. Then I have 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the power of negative 1 half u. Instead of c dz, I have du divided by 2. Okay? We don't really need to do uh, this integrals at all because I have two integrals which are almost exactly the same except one is the negative of the other one. Two quantities, one is the negative of the other one. When you, when you sum them up, you get a zero. Therefore, we have the expectation of a standard normal random variable is zero. We can also find the expectation of z using the moment generating function technique. That is, the expectation of z is the derivative with respect to t of the moment generating function of z, mzt, and evaluate this as t goes to zero. That is, at the limit of t approaching zero. All right, so what we need is to find the moment generating function of a standard normal random variable, which is actually one of the things we want to find. That is the expectation of e to the power of dz, that equals the integral negative to infinity to positive infinity of e to the power of tz times the PDF, which is one over the square root of two pi e to the power of negative one half z squared dz. Combining the exponent terms, natural exponent terms, I have the integral negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over the square root of 2 pi times 1 half, e, times e to the negative 1 half z squared plus tz dz. That equals negative infinity to infinity 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the power of negative 1 half. Taking negative 1 half as a common multiplier, we have z squared minus 2 times tz inside the parentheses. All right, then dz. Adding t squared and subtracting t squared. The first three terms of the exponent inside the parentheses would be z minus t quantity squared. So this integral is negative infinity to positive infinity, 1 over the square root of 2 pi, e to the power of negative 1 half times z minus t quantity squared times e to the power of negative 1 half. The last term in the parentheses is minus t squared dz. Now this expression does not depend with uh, on, on z, so we can take it outside of the integral. Therefore we have e to the power of negative 1 half t squared the integral negative infinity to positive infinity of 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e to the negative 1 half z minus t squared dz. If you look at this integrand, it is the probability density function of a normal random variable with mean t and variance equals 1. It integrates to 1. Therefore, the MGF is e to the power of 1 half t squared find the expectation, we need to find the derivative with respect to t of the MGF, and that equals d by dt of mct is equal to the derivative with respect to t of e to the power of 1 half t squared. e to the power of 1 half t squared times by the chain rule, the derivative of the exponent is t. Okay, taking this expression and then plugging it up here, the limit as t goes to zero of the derivative, which is t times e to the power of one half t squared. All right, as t goes to zero, t goes to zero, e to the power of one half t squared goes to one, zero times one goes to zero. And the expected value is zero as we have found earlier. Okay, we already have the MGF. To find the variance, we have the second moment 
minus the first moment squared, the square of the first moment. But the first moment is zero, therefore the variance is equal to the second moment of the standard normal random variable. Using the moment generating function technique, the second moment is the second derivative of the MGF evaluated as t approaches zero. Okay, we already have the first moment. t times is to one half d squared. The second derivative is uh, d, d squared by dt squared mzt is the derivative of the first der derivative which is equal to by the product rule, take the derivative of e to the power of 1 half t squared, which will be e to the 1 half t squared times t, multiplied by the second term, which is t, so we have a t squared, plus e to the power of 1 half t squared times the, the derivative of the second expression, d by dt, dt by dt is 1, so this is the second derivative of the moment generating function. And for the variance is the limit as t equals to zero of e to the one half t squared times t squared plus e to the one half t squared. As t goes to zero, the first expression goes to zero because t squared goes to zero. As t goes to zero, the second expression goes to one. Therefore, the variance of a standard normal random variable is equal to one. Okay. Using what we found, we have uh, the moment generating function of all x is e to the power of t mu plus one half sigma squared t squared 